All righty, here we go. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Full Spectrum Cycling, this being the 270th edition of said show. 270-yo. Yes, I couldn't think of anything clever. I right? I thought about it, but no. Nothing, nothing, nothing popped in. Today we have JK. Hey, hey. Tony is uh, otherwise indisposed on this recording he, session. He heckled me. He said my bike was ugly as I... Rode by as he was waiting to pick up the Daniel. <laughs> I was, I th- I heard somebody yelling at me and people, well, it's first day of school. So people are uh, parked where they ain't supposed to be parked. And it's just like, oh, so I'm already gritting my damn teeth trying to get into traffic. And then I hear somebody yelling at me and it's a school. <laughs> so I, I marshaled it in. I didn't go, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Which oh. is the normal reaction, and then I looked over, and it was the Tony. So. Well, with uh, with Lake Drive and Downer both closed. <laughs> Dude, that place is a shit show right I came now. down uh, Hartford, which I only because I wanted to be on oh. the east side of Oakland so I could go to uh, Otto's Liquor, and since we're already at the top of the hill, Ding we'll, just, we'll just talk about the beer right away and get that yeah. out of the way. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wanted I didn't want to go loop around the block and do this and wait for the light. So I went down Hartford <laughs> and I'm like, oh, these kids don't know where they're going yet. They're just oh, all, they just blindly walk across the street, over the place. walk across the street. That's oh, I shit you not. That is like my like bane of my existence. The beginning of every fucking semester, it's like they don't know how to like cross streets. Like, even if it's a crosswalk, I'm sorry. I get it. Yeah, use that. But the paint ain't going to stop the car. Right. You look out. Because they're, they're on their phone. They're doop, doop, exactly. Doop, doop, or even that. No, they just feel entitled. Yeah, uh, that could be. They haven't learned that yet, you know. And the other one is <clears throat> wait for people to get out of an elevator before you try to enter the elevator. Good call. Because more people fit in there when you let the people out. Yeah. So I, I always come out like, like inflate like a puffer fish <laughs> as I'm coming out like <laughs> gonna put them, like not totally put them in the boards but right know, a little bit you know to, yeah. to, to use the little mosh pit technique like feel pressure on the forearms that there you arm go. goes away and we're at the top of the hill so can, yeah I I well I went into Otto's and uh, oh man Raised Grain is a brewing company out of Waukesha Wisconsin or Waukesha I wonder if they're using our lake water to brew this beer. Uh, because they now get Lake Michigan water, even though they're in the Mississippi River watershed. Did they do a, river like watershed. a, li- a lily pad from, like, because I think that happened with New Berlin. Like New well, Berlin New Berlin, got, I don't, well, I think, I think they're they, still on our side. I think they're still in the Great Lakes watershed. Uh, Waukesha is definitely in the Mississippi River, and they're not supposed to take water out of this side and put it on that side. They have to return everything they get, theoretically, uh, but they can still oh. use it. Oh, that's a, anyway, very hippie. So uh, <laughs> you know, I got I got mesmerized by the label from yes, this. Yes, uh, it is. It is right. raised grain cold IPA called Shrinkage. <laughs> I wonder what that means. Anyway, it's not bad. Eyes up here, YouTubers. Yep, I um. don't. I, it's not bad. <laughs> I, um, I didn't have a fluffer fluffy today, so this was this is actually my first decent beer of the day. So, but yeah, I don't I, know. I it's, cheated. It, it's good. Uh, I don't know much about it. You can look on, on Untapped. Uh, it is a, I don't know what cold IPA means. Might be how it's brewed or something. Most likely. Yeah. Didn't seem to have any indicators of its uh, alkahoosies, but I'll assume in the six. No, we can, uh, maybe Untapped has something. Let's see here. I'd say, I'll guess six, five. All right. Six, five. I'm going six, two. Uh, nine, 940 reviews. 6.3. Oh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, um, split it. Gordian knot. Yeah, it's a four and a half uh, from that guy. 3.73 average, 790 ratings. Wow. It's a hop forward uh, ale using citra hops, creating a beer that's ultimately crispy, cleaner, and more crushable like a lager. Crisp and clean. No but caffeine. I was, so when I looked at, uh, <laughs> when I. <laughs> when I looked at uh, Raised Grain's website, I couldn't find it, and I found it in like their 
seasonals or past beers, I'm like, oh, oh shit, did I get suckered into a nine-month-old beer again? Yeah, yeah, like my motorhead yeah, purchase. But not so bad. So right, right, right. I give it no, a go. It's tasty. But yeah. they got they got tons of different uh, tons of different beers. Uh, and very good art on most of them. So there you go. If you're a beer can art person, check that out. Yeah, Naked Threesome is on tap at places I've seen. And that's a tasty some sort of IPA. I think it's a lot, I think there are a lot of IPA with different names and different potencies. It's a little burpy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Woo, fizzy lifting drinks. Well, we didn't. That's uh, the only way that you can keep down from the ceiling, Greg. That's but, how it is. Yeah. I mean, Sven. It's a. <laughs> It's been a uh, it was a it was a long weekend with the holiday in there, but uh, we di- we didn't see J.K. all that much. No, I was out of town for the tour to towner. Which tour to towner was good. There was about a dozen people, um, several people that hadn't done it before, which was kind of like Berta and Mike were there. And yeah, so. I saw them so. later in the day because when I got back from West Bend, uh, <clears throat> rode down to Nomad Brady Street. They were doing a Caribbean reggae thing, <clears throat> which was. Cool. Uh, Mark, DJ Marcus Doucette right on. was doing his thing, but we got there when he was done, and the band was setting up, and it was J.D. Rankin and the Solomon Royals. Sort of a Raga thing, yeah. It's essentially King Solomon with just mm, the same players, just some removed and some replaced. So Same vibe. That was... You know? uh, that was Sunday, Saturday. But it was fun. They, it was all the beats, the big old, you know, shabba, you know, the big shabba voice going on. Yeah. Right on. I'm like, oh, yeah, it scratched a good edge. Uh, Saturday, Tony and I did a pre-ride of a proposed mm. Steel is Real course, which I think we nailed pretty good what's going to happen, but need a little bit of more work. So the next couple Saturdays, we're going to do a pre-ride again. If you're available, JK, we'd love to uh, get your input. Sure. Um, we skipped going long out of uh, – it's starting at Hollander on the 21st of September here in Milwaukee. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm proposing to do this year is not tell anybody about the route. Right. I was going to ask, but then I thought <laughs> – I was like, well, I think we discussed the, eh, the, 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 I don't know. The, yeah. If you go through pictures that are in feeds and stuff, you might I mean, get a clue get as to where some of them yeah. are, but not when or you know how much or how long. Um, also – You just want to get ahead of the person that's going to – like, you want to get to the place before the person that you know is going to order something complex is, gets in front yeah, of you. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's about gonna, the only thing. I don't think that's going to happen because it's not telling anybody where it is. But all the same. Before we get there. All the same. Um, and uh, we're, we're, doing, we're doing a uh, uh, tribute to clunkers this year. Mm, mm-hmm. So if you have a clunker esque bike, bring that thing. If you don't, bring that other thing. Does my ugly purple bike? It would be in the spirit yeah, of somewhat because spirit it's, of because yeah, it's a piece of shit. Somewhat in the spirit of the in single speed. Uh, even even the uh, the low side, you know, it's got elements of clunkiness to it. Yeah, yeah. I just have to get, the tire. get that yeah. tire fixed again. <laughs> <laughs> what a great bike with a flat tire all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, I keep it like keep it on the shelf for like a little while, like a month or two, and then. Re, re, like readdress it, reinflate it, and then have fun with it for another couple of months, and you know. So I don't know. yeah. Speaking of surly, because that was a surly low side. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's seen the. Oh my! I don't know if I'm going to call it ridiculous or not. I haven't ridden it yet, but visually the, ridiculous. The new Moonlander is a 24 inch wheel with a 6.2 inch tire. It looks like the shit you'd see down in like, hey, you know, this is the cruise ship excursion and we're on those like humongous uh um water uh tricycle thing you know what i'm talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. they're like not really inflated but it has that yeah vibe and, and when i saw it i think to get it to work they had to make it kind of longer and stuff so it's sort of a it, it's a float at all costs expedition thing it seems like sure i mean i could see terrain it's also that would be uh, it, really, it's also really sig- great. In. It's significantly expensive because it's got a pinion drive, which I think has eighteen gears or something, uh-huh. and it's you know it's like forty two hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. Amongst the most expensive Surleys ever, sure, that are not electric, you know, and prob- it probably is the most expensive that's not an electric. Hey, I got a button to push here. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Welcome to the radio program, caller. Who do we have on the line? Hey, it's Silly Dave. Hi, Seely Dave. 
I didn't like that. We were ju- <clears throat> we were just discussing the new Surly Moonlander six point <clears throat> six point two edition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good job, good job, Surly. I mean, we uh, w- Gomez dropped this rumor like what six or seven months ago or something. Right. Yeah. There was, Remember that? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I think right around the time we were all debating whether whether um, fat bikes were a fad. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I didn't. I, I did not see the uh, the pinion drive coming. That I didn't. I did not see that at all either. I think it's pretty freaking cool, though. Yeah, it's. Um, I think the whole bike is super cool. I mean, it's and it's thoroughly at its best, right? Thoroughly doing something completely out of the box, mm-hmm. just for the freaking you know, fuck of it. Right. I mean, so our, fatter our, tires, bigger grins. Right. <laughs> so I, right? Yeah, I don't know if this is going to create another, uh, you know, war of, of tire sizes, but I'm just wondering how many other companies might come out with a 6.2 tire now, or if they're going to be the sole, well, so, sole purveyor okay, so, of that size. So, I don't need this bike because <laughs> our trail are, few that do. I've got, you know, I've do. got four, I, I've got 4.8 inch tires. I've got studded tires on my Milwaukee fat bike. My trails are groomed. You know, um, I've got gravel roads to ride on in the winter as well. So I don't really need this, but I can see that this could help grow fat biking like more out west like the mountains Mm -hmm. they don't they don't groom a lot you know they don't groom a lot of if you look at like maps of where all the groom trails are you look at like places out in colorado in the mountains and stuff like that or you know utah or they don't groom a lot and so like they're stuck riding on at best like snowmobile trails if they want to go off you know, the gravel road network. So I think this could maybe expand fat bike use out West. That would be interesting because any, I think almost any, maybe not every, but almost uh, places that do groom are resorts like Grand Tar Heap grooms. And there's some stuff around right. uh, Jackson <laughs> hole and, you know, yeah. but they're kind of connected with local, right. local but, resorts more than anything else. Yeah, but it's, I mean, really, the Midwest is kind of like the grooming mecca for, for fat bikes, you know. Um, so min, upper Minnesota, Wisconsin, and, and Michigan are, are probably, you know, the most, where the most groomed trails are, I, I would guess. Absolutely. I don't know about Odie. Well, especially um, when we have, when we actually like, get snow with the... <laughs> Hopefully we get some snow this year. Right, not counting last winter. Right. What's what's yeah, not counting last what, winter? What does the uh, the farmers' almanac say about your area this year? Have you got any prognostication up there? I think we're there? supposed to have a good. I think we're supposed to have a good winter this this winter. Yeah, I think we're supposed to have a good one. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, I'm I'm actually I three cheers for Surly for hitting it out of the park again. Um, you know, I I super. And uh, here's the one thing, though, um, that bike, I, I would never get that bike until somebody makes studded tires. Oh, okay. I mean, I just ride studded tires all winter, you know, and there's there's like one tire for that bike right now, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, I mean, we, I just, it kind of just dropped last week as something we can actually talk right. about. So, yeah, you're kind of, you if know, they come out with keep like a, a super a secret. Point two inch yeah. Dillinger, yeah. A, a, which will be, you know, four hundred dollars per tire or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, hey, well, that was, right? yeah, it, are cheap now. It was thirty percent off. Uh, yeah, I think it was a thirty for thirty percent off select gear off of Forty Five North <laughs> this past weekend. Yeah, I don't think it, I, was, it, was I like, don't think it included oh, tires. That no, it been didn't. I, yet. I, I, I sniffed around and I'm like, yeah, there's a bunch of shit I don't really need. You know. Forty yeah. percent off a of forty, but, you $40 know, I mean, gator. Huh? No. Full retail on full retail on Dillinger is like two fifty, right? Yeah. Well, some of them have came down, and then they made new ones, and those were more expensive. And I don't know if it's just, you know, I don't know the pricing scheme. When inventory is high, prices drop. Basically, that's how you know QBP works. So, 
Yeah, yeah. But and they, so and if then they if come you, out with six point two studded tires, they'll, they'll be expensive. I'm just saying. You know, I would imagine. Yeah, but you know, that's if if it's what you need, it's what you need. <laughs> yeah, you know it, and you only need one one set of those, and they last for at least five years. True that. At least so. All right. Um, so. Yeah, but I, I liked it. I was pleased. I was a, a little surprised. I wasn't expecting, as you said, the pinion thing, which I think is also very cool. But, um, yeah, so maybe this also means um, more pinion stuff for other Surleys is what I'm wondering about. Yeah, I'm just still kind of trying to I figure out if, gonna... if they had to use, like, a pinion or similar to get the chain line wide enough to work with this setup. So. You know, you couldn't do a traditional drivetrain on it. Plus, obviously, the wide range of the pinion is going to make it a lot more useful for sure. But it, it makes it spendy. Well, and it's got expensive. It derail- they've got a derailleur hanger on on the on the rear. You know, dropout. They've got a derailleur hanger on it. So in theory, you could run a pinion, and I think it's only their nine-speed pinion on this one. It's the it's yeah. the low-end pinion. Um, I think it's so in theory. But it's still got 548% gear range or something. It's just got kind of big gaps. In theory, you could put like a cassette on the back of a back there and and you could have a pinion plus, plus <laughs> a cassette back there. It would like, be interesting. It might, oh yeah, I do yeah, see that. It, might be, it yeah. might be a little truncated or something, but it would give you a, even at a wider range. Yeah, right. Yeah. So in theory you could do that, but I would suspect that who cares? It's a fat bike. Yeah. If you've got five hundred and forty eight percent gear ratio, who cares how widely spaced they are? Well That's it's fine. it's like the uh it, it, it's like the the uh the box system is a five hundred plus percent range in nine speeds, which I think for fat bikes is not a bad idea because the chain is a nine speed chain and not a twelve speed chain and it's less susceptible to sand and other crap getting in there and Oh, and it's a twenty four yeah. by. Yes, twenty four is twenty four by. Yeah. Right on. All right. Well, Surly, yeah. congrats on that idea. Let's see how that works for you. Yeah, um, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Well, there's a couple other things going on up at uh, by you. Uh, one is we got a date for the Fat Bike Berkey now, May eighth, two thousand twenty five. So that's a ways out, which we can talk about later. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the Jerry thing, the Jerry Wright Memorial? Well, um, yeah, so that, that's coming up, um, is that I forgot the date. October, you, should be October. on my calendar. October 12th <laughs> is the date I've got. October 12th, yeah. I was thinking it was the 12th, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's, you know, I mean, it's just a, a terrible you know, I, I mean, I, people, people probably don't know how many things Jerry did a, as a volunteer. I, I mean, he, not only was he like, you know, mountain bike patrol, he was, he was on two different search and rescue teams. He, um, <clears throat> he was on the intercounty trail emergency trail signage team, which created these like um, USNG um emergency trail marker system that's been being put up all around on all the trail networks the ski trails that um the uh um mountain bike trails and the atv utv trails and snowmobile trails he he did all the gi helped with all the gis stuff and putting up the actual signs you know i mean he groomed for Camba. He was a trail steward for Camba on the summertime trails. He, um, he coached Nika. He, you know, I mean, he was on the board of everything. He just did. He, he wrote, you know, a medical on the tour de Schwamigan for us and, and the hungry bear when I ran that as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Jerry just did countless things. And, um, but the big thing that like Jerry did, other than all that volunteer stuff, which will definitely be missed, um, was like he just always had this like positive attitude. He always had a goofy grin on his face. He <laughs> always had sure. something stupid, funny to say. 
you know, like he was always laughing about something on a ride. I, I think of Jerry as, as, you know, one of those great emotional ride Sherpas who just sort of, you know, carried everybody's spirits on virtually every ride he was on. Yeah. And, we, uh, well, we were, we rode with, uh, we rode with Mike and Berta who had, had uh, this last weekend who had done tour to Schwamagon with you guys. And they just were like, yeah. Oh, he was so great. You know, around, he would just, you know, recount stories and talk and was, you know, it was just a very, yeah. a great person that they were happy to have met. And I mean, I first met him like 30 years ago and it's just been, you know, it's been, it, it's, Did you know, him from Decora. Yeah. Did you from, know him it, from Iowa. Or? I knew him from Deke basically at, at, which is now only Oda river cycles, but back then it was Decora bicycles and Jerry was a, he was, he just, that's where he got stuff back then. And Deke was a good friend of his and, you know, I, I, yeah, I, he's from, I, I knew he was from Iowa and yeah. I actually, I never put two and two together with like the Chewy Spinner sort of crowd with Jerry. Um, <laughs> it, I never thought of that, but it makes, oh, he, but fit, I guess, he, yeah, he, he fits right. He, yeah, he definitely fits right in with the crowd. That's for sure. He's uh, just yeah. like, like you said, yeah. it, he was, he's like a Sherpa that just spread, spread the love and, and, you know, the love of mountain biking, especially yeah. everywhere. So, yeah. Anyway, October yeah, 12th. Yeah, but he was also one of the very first fat bikers. He was part of Camba Fat when when Camba um Camba didn't want fat bikes and didn't, you know, the early there was in the same way, you know, ski hills resisted snowboards. Sure. The mountain bike crowd resisted fat bikes early and everybody up here is like it's ski season, screw that, you know, and Jerry was an early fat bike adopter and part of the people that put together the very first um groomed fat bike trails up here so um camba fat trails they were called at the time so yeah countless ways jerry impacted the community and um and uh everything he's done will continue to you know people will continue to have you know positive impacts from all the things jerry did for years and years to come it's just he won't be around. Yeah. Which is very sad. Sure. And, you know, it's just one of those crazy things. You know, Jerry was a very safe rider always, you know, um, it was just a freak thing where, you know, a broken, it sounds like a, he had a Carver fat bike, Kai Carver fat bike. And sometimes he had a, I think sometimes he had a, a no name carbon fork on it. And other times he had the Thai fork that came with it and i guess the tie fork broke it sounds like at the steer tube oh boy and he had, was just taking down signs um on the trails at telemark after the schwamigan 100 race again volunteering and just landed the absolute wrong way um you know in rocks like on his face and um Ugh. yeah and yeah. it just so yeah so it's just a weird freak accident um and you know nothing you can do about it and well, i guess he so upside is he died doing what he loved that's what you know, everybody says for sure on a bike yeah so I, you know it, it, it's some consolation in terms of that and I, I feel it i feel it's somewhat ironic that deke 30 years ago or 25 years ago had a had a, i would say not a similar well somewhat of a similar injury i guess he dropped off a curb and was riding home from his bike shop to his house in Decora and dropped off the curb and his wheel wedged in a sewer grate and just pitched him right over the bars, oh. you know, going eight or 10 miles an hour. And, you know, uh, he right. got airlifted to uh, uh, Mayo and they said, this is, this is one of the worst facial something, something, whatever they called it, things they'd seen. And yeah, in his case, they were able yeah. to, you know, do the things that were necessary, but, uh, yeah, what a drag. So October 12th, right, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know a bunch of people that are going up there. We'll be up there and, um, I'm sure he'll have a, yeah, I'll, def I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely be at that. Right. But, um, all right. Um, so, uh, the other reason why I called though, a couple other reasons. One, um, I sent you some text photos of, I went up, I had a, the Darrow make a custom uh, frame bag for my Omnium. Yep. And it, it turned out so nice. I, I can't, I, it's the nicest. It is definitely the nicest 
you know, bike packing bag I own. And they did such a great job. And it was a very fun shop visit as well. Um, but so um, I'm going to take a few non phone photos. The things I sent to you were just phone photos. Yeah. I actually did some, I did a little, I did a photo story for uh, the website, the North dot com sure um and uh so uh, that plus some more photos of my omnium bag will be up on that but i'll get brandon from omnium some photos of this it's sweet so the so it's um i had mine made in black with black canvas wax canvas then they line it with um with a a nylon liner so a light colored liner i picked yellow so you can when you look in your bag it's easier to find stuff rather than looking in a black uh -huh. you know, yeah. uh -huh. bag. um so it's lined with yellow then it's got two compartments it's got a lower compartment that's like eh, three inches tall that's full length so like i can put my tripod and all the stuff you know long heavy things like stuff like in tent stakes or poles and stuff like that down in that bottom thing. And then I also put like my tubes and, and stuff like that down in there. Um, and then it's got this cavernous main compartment that also has on the side. I didn't even know this when I ordered it, they have three little mesh dividers on, on the side, the zipper side. Um, so, like you can stuff like your um your multi tool or you know your your knives or things like things that you might want to grab and not just have dumped in this big cavernous <clears throat> frame bag yeah and then I could put all kinds of coals or whatever else in the rest of that and then the and then the um other side has got one of those thin map pockets that's full depth so. Like I, can, it's a map pocket, but I can stick my arm all the way yeah. down to my elbow. Yeah, oh, I kind of no, nice. I, I see your picture so, of that. You don't mind if we throw these pictures up on the site just to show the. No, no, okay. please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah please do. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, 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 they do a great a job. Really well built. Yeah, so good. So I, so the shop up there, it's in uh, Two Harbors, which is a town a little bit bigger than Hayward, thirty five hundred people or something like that, right on the South Shore Lake Superior. And um, it's got a bike shop, um, Spoken Gear Bike Shop. It's got um, Cedar Coffee Company, a coffee shop that also serves, you know, wraps and sandwiches and stuff like that. And then it's got the Sidero Bag Making Company. So there's 35 plus employees working there wow. um, at this sort of like um, compound. They're also like a warm shower on warm showers. So like they've got external bathrooms with showers that you can get a door code to. So like if you're doing some sort of like adventure jumping off from two harbors and you want to, you can leave your vehicle in their parking lot and go off bike packing or whatever. And then when you come back, you want to get cleaned up before you drive home, you've got access to a, a bathroom with a, a hot shower and stuff Damn. like that. So that's quite, um, quite the service. And the owner, Dan Crookshank, he used to run, he owns the company Granite Gear. Remember that company? Yeah. It's still around, but he sold it. Oh, um, okay. They made like um, Duluth packs and backpacks and like stuff bags and stuff like that. Um, he and a buddy. So I think he made a bunch of money selling Granite Gear to somebody else. And then he used that money to open this shop. So very nice shop. And the shop had mostly Surly's. But they also had a bunch of Atzos, like Thai and stainless Atzos. They had Velo Orange bikes, and they had um, and they have uh, Eskers. They had that. Uh, they even had uh, the first one I've seen in the wild, uh, Esker Hey Duke LVS, the so long titanium. Yeah, that's Esker. a that's a good looking bike. The tail. Yeah, and they make custom frame bags for all that stuff too, kind of like they did for the Black Burrow. They made they make custom frame bags for black burrows and stuff too, but so they're, for they're those materials. But so yeah, not, so just, right now that they've had your bike up there, they would do this bag for anybody with your size Omnium because they probably yeah. already have all the patterns. So they, they made the pattern for, for my bike. They said it'd be very easy for them to make the pattern for the other 
three, four sizes that, um, that, uh, Omnium has and, um, of the, the full cargo. I know some other people are making the mini max bags already. Um, but this is the first company that I've seen that's made one for the full cargo frame. And, um, and they, they've got, you know, 15 different professional sewing machines. They're not just like using one, like pro, you know, sewing machine. They've got like all these different models that do very specific tasks. And they've got a, um, a computer programmable pattern cutting machine to cut all their fabric. That's so that's that allows them to be a lot more efficient and very accurate. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a totally pro it's a super pro operation with about five employees just at Sidero. Yeah. I'm kind of, so. I w- I've been kind of curious about that whole, uh, you know, making stuff out of uh, flat things and turning it into things that people wear or people put on their bikes because there is a company right across the driveway from us that makes wetsuits for like pro water ski teams. And so there's like 20 or 30 oh. people on these teams. They make wetsuits for them, but they don't do a lot in the winter. And I'm like, dudes, you know, they got a, three or four people yeah. that sew and they've got a bunch of, like you're talking about, this machine does this kind of stitch and it's for this thing. And I don't think, right. I'm not sure if yeah. they have the pattern yeah. cutter, but you know, it'd be like, huh, I don't know. Maybe you got some ideas. I think called an auto, met- an auto metric, auto metrics um, cutter. Yeah, that's that's so, awesome. Um, awesome. But yeah, it was a, it was a super cool shop visit. I had a, I had a great time chatting with them. Um, there'll be a write up on Josh Rizzo's website, the North and XRTH.com. So, um, yeah, cool. so there's that. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention is, so this weekend is, um, there is in, um, I didn't think of this. You should have been invited to this. Um, <laughs> there is a creators <laughs> conference at Windman trails. Um, so it's a bunch of people that have like YouTube channels and stuff like that. I am the only podcaster and writer going though huh. um, most everybody else is just a youtube channel or instagram you know yeah. um, well if you want to beat up those so people nobody, uh, you nobody. know as podcasters <laughs> come and beat up all the youtube creators i'll come up there <laughs> 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 uh, you know so, yeah, so we'll have the west side a, story soundtrack going organized yeah. by right it's organized by uh the dusty dutchman you know uh and uh he, he does a lot. He and his buddy um, Fruit Punch do a lot up at Winman, and so they put together this creators conference up there. Winman really does have their crap together. Um, you know, they got 23 miles of mountain bike trails. They're constantly improving them. They have their own builders on staff with their own equipment. They have a a, a shop uh, with uh, like beer and food and you know um, stuff like that. And they're actually building a campground there as well. Um, so. Plus skiing and, and snowshoe trails and stuff like that. Windman really does have their have their crap together. Yeah, it sounds I mean, I'm always interested in that because as as little money as I make at this, which is none, I've been doing this for a really long time and I love mm-hmm. I love doing the stuff and you know, we've recently gotten into just videoing this very simply, but I'm kind of like 90% of the way towards being a lot more pro about this. So I'm kinda like, I want to know people that are doing it and making it work well for them and stuff like that what well, button yeah. did you push what string did you pull yes <laughs> pulled it out yeah so um uh, awesome and you know i mean i know you've got your yeah and then so then the other side of that i'm gonna take cowboy with me and my um bike packing bike and um and we're gonna head off and try to finish my little mini waterfall um route that i've got so saturday i'll go to winman do that and then sunday monday Tuesday, uh, Cowboy and I will try to finish off my um, waterfall route that I've got um, with uh, Omnium. So, is this the one yeah, over so in the in the, we'll, uh, in the UP there? The UP, yeah. It's nor- basically, it kind of right now it starts in Watersmeet because Watersmeet has a parking lot by a canoe launch that is also next to an ATV trail where you can park for free and leave a car without a permit. But there's some other places north of the route that I'm gonna uh, that I haven't been to yet. But because um, my last um, recon ride got cut short due to hot weather, and uh, I'm gonna check out and see if I can find a different parking spot up on the northern part of it, closer to like a little smaller town, 
But anyway, I'll let you guys know how that all works out once cool. that's done. But all um, right. And then the weekend after that is Climbing Mountain Bike Festival. So lots of stuff happening. Well, yeah, I, I know, I know. It's, busy. <laughs> it, it's a good time of year because fall rules in the <laughs> North Woods. So uh, when it becomes we're September, almost, yeah, it, the leaves are just hinting, teasing us with the fall colors to come. The bugs, if people are thinking about coming up, the bugs, the mosquitoes have, like, no oomph left to them anymore. They're not, like, <laughs> gone, but they... They had their time, I, right? I, they I, had their time. Yeah, I... <laughs> right. The black flies are all gone, and I, it's a little natty right now mm. um, in the evenings um, or the early mornings. It, the gnats can be a little annoying, but... Um, but we're almost there. Um, and actually, it's pretty great right now. And the temps are great. The colors aren't, haven't peaked yet. That'll be, you know, mid-October yeah, or something that, like that. Yeah, that, uh, that the October 12th weekend should be a pretty great time to be up there and celebrate somebody yeah, that did yeah. a lot of Gary's wonderful weekend, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Gary's weekend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys. And, um, yeah, and I don't know, I don't know Deke. I don't think, and um, I don't know if I even know JP. I'm, I must have met JP at some sort of fat bike beach ride, something or other. Oh, probably. In the past, but I don't. Oh, uh, but, yeah. So it's Deke, JP, and r 2 and Spinner coming up? That's my understanding, yeah. And, you know, JP's from Madison, okay, so and you're, he's, he's going to, me and Lunds are. But uh, isn't he originally from from decora or something uh, he's connected with all those guys you know i mean oh it's okay. a, it's all a big happy family you know for Are the last for really the last from... whatever how many years it's been so we're all pink on the inside right <laughs> yeah dave and i are planning on coming <laughs> up uh, uh likely we'll be well, i mean he, oh yeah lunch is coming yeah. yeah we'll be up there friday and uh get your bail running yeah where <laughs> where are you where are you and lunch stand uh, in your garage. No. <laughs> As I said, get the at, bail bunny. At right? this well, point, at this point, I'm not positive. But uh, <laughs> okay, but that is an option. My, as I said, my upstairs the Airbnb that Matt Hewitt from Ben Cycle. Um, he's him and his wife Liz Frantic are moving up here, so um, they're they're taking over that until they find a house to buy. Sure. Oh, but nice. the oh, we lower know, we know Liz. still does have that whole. <laughs> Whole bathroom and and I actually have a couple of cots even. Um, uh, I got a and van. of course I have the full bike packing gear library. Oh, that's so for sure. Sleeping bags and all that sort of. Nope. Yeah. So don't, if don't let Dave want, use them. Don't let Dave use one though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Will, yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll we'll <laughs> yeah, we'll know, touch you base. Know, I, I'm, yeah, you know. I'm waiting to see what those guys do to make it. You know, I don't want to intrude too much, but we'll be low impact. It just I think. They're looking for stuff a little closer to Hayward, so it's more bikeable rather than drivable. Yeah, I know. That's what you were saying. Um, yeah. and like I said, I think the Walmart parking lot is their best bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, yeah, what can you do? Bring your 24-foot trailer with your yeah. generator and your, you know, whatever, Honestly, solar array. if I were them, though, I mean, I don't know what they want to do. If they just want to go out to, like, um, Angry Minnow and – anglers or something like that and drinking right around in Hayward that's but but they're not they're going to hate the the trails in Hayward because <laughs> they're all flowy Chewy said he's um, Chewy said he's so bringing his road bike for those be better trails. Off. <laughs> <laughs> right they'd be better off just <laughs> camping at you know at Rome where they can ride you know good gravel and Sealy pass up to Ojibwe and stuff like that. And then, and then just driving to this steakhouse in Hayward for one, the one event and, and then just being able to ride to the sawmill or whatever, you know, Saw. or cable from, from Rome. That's where they'd be better off camping. Yeah. Hopefully they're so, opinion. so steel is real is the 21st of September here in Milwaukee. And hopefully those guys, mm -hmm. at least some of those guys are coming over. Chewie's trying to put together a crew to come here for Steel is Real. So we can get some good talking in about some planning and get some ideas that okay. might work for everybody. Well, let me know. And if you have any other questions, I can try to, you know, right direct on. them. But who am I to try to tell <laughs> Chewie or Spinner what to do? Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you for calling in. All good stuff. All right. um, and uh, we'll catch up with yeah. you soon. Right on, man. Okay. Bye, Dave. Adios. Later, buddy. No, no, Tony. No, Tony. No. Uh, Tony is uh, his wife had uh, it was first day of class. I think she had yep. something special going on at UWM, so he's watching uh, the eighty eight pound terror mosh pit creator. My, oh, <laughs> oh God, we got we'll talk to we'll talk to you about that when we see you. But that was one of the greatest things ever seen is little Daniel being well. He's not so little, but he's very adamantly mosh pitting. <laughs> all right, all right. That sounds awesome. Yeah, good to, good to talk okay. to you. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Later. Yep. Bye. Seely Dave, everybody. A lot of good information there. Yeah, yeah. Got a. I got to find some links for the I, the Sidero bag is so cool. I he sent me pictures of that before, but I know uh, I felt out, I felt left out. Uh, I couldn't see anything. I there's. I just smiled and nodded. We're gonna to we're the, gonna push a lot of the stuff on here back yeah. till next week because we have a whole other show here that we, we didn't even get to, which is but fine. this but, week this weekend we have to address. Let's address this weekend then. Poker Riot. Oh yeah, for sure. Because that was always and a- the inaugural <laughs> appearance of Sigmund Snowpeck the third at the Polka Riot. Yeah, he's gonna be. That, I think he's gonna be the first one. That's actually uh, two o'clock. Uh, that's, a big, that's a big deal. Yeah, Didn't and Sigmund. Well, how? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm also curious how that whole kit's gonna get into that little cubby hole. No, it goes. Rides. It goes outside. That's what I'm saying. In at last rites, it's they have, still a little cubby hole. I think they cut that tree down. Doesn't matter. It's still a, yeah. It's like a weird yeah. diorama that you made in like sixth grade that you have to walk a little bit. Like whoop whoop so, whoop whoop yeah, whoop. So whoop, last, whoop, so whoa, September whoa. is it Saturday? Yep. Yeah, it would be the, September seventh, two days before the holiday, which would be the birth of the JK. The JK, which is also, by the way, the next. Um, Big Apple announcement for what they're coming out with. So that might nine over- nine. Yes, it's overshadowing your stuff with the new iPad and- from Tim Apple. Tim Tim Apple. Tim yes, Apple, wanna, my favorite guy. Steve right. Apple Jobs must be just rolling. I, we have to call Russell. I love muscle, <laughs> but he was in the hammock. That the last thing uh, I saw. I, why do people take pictures of their feet? He is a in the toe show brother. Oh, I don't know. If some God. people are down for the toe show. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're all here now for the what? toe show. Oh, wow. Na, 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 that was a twist. Na, 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 na. Oh. Oh, and Marilyn. Little Marilyn. Action. Little Marilyn Manson. All right, everybody. Thank you for doing this extended version with Seely Dave and JK. And we'll be back next week. I go assume go, that go, we'll have a. Lose, I assume we'll have a Tony Burger. I'm not positive, but. Uh, you should. We'll. we'll Strong arm him into it. Bye. Mm, Bye.